I believe this. There is, you either worship a God or you worship yourself. And I think that at that moment in your life, what not think, I want to know, what was it completely that opened your eyes? Because there's people that will like, you could give them all the evidence in the world, but they don't, they'll reject it because they want to worship their lifestyle of sex, their lifestyle of drinking, their lifestyle of this. What was your pivotal moment and what would you give to your enemies and your friends to just give them that information? Because I think, and this is just from my point of view, I think that's when you started really just taking off. So I'll give you, I'll give you a complete curveball here. What percentage of her past do you know? How do you have, maintain, and grow your faith in God, even when you have tangible reasons not to do so? Or when faith leaves room for a level of uncertainty and risk? Hey, it's a pretty good question to ask, right? So the Bible defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. So why put 100% trust in something you have not seen or touched? In this reaction video, Patrick Bet David shared a struggle with faith and how he arrived at God at a young age, growing up in a war-torn country, and a perfectionist who likes taking calculated risks in a deep spiritual conversation with George Janko. And before we go into the content, kindly note that this video does not intend to promote hate, but help us understand God on a deeper level through biblical insights. Are you ready? So let's put on your seatbelt all aboard on this faith train. <laughs> okay, that was kind of cheesy, but let's just play the clip, all right? What percentage of her past do you know? A lot of it. I, mean, I would say like almost all of it. Do you think you know 100% of it? I would believe I do on the aspect of in this relationship, the one who runs it is the Lord. So I can never judge her for her past. I can never judge her for her future. Okay. What percentage of your past you think she knows? Every single bit of it. Okay, fine. I'm convinced if you think you know all of it, you have a God complex yourself. Let me explain. No, you fair. can push back and, and I'll give you my point yeah. of view. So when you're marrying somebody, you know, a man wants to know what? Everything. Why? We're insecure, we're protective, we're territorial. Mm -hmm. We have this natural like, hey, you're mine. Like, hey, yeah, I want to make sure. Know. I need to know <laughs> yeah. like, what happened with that guy and how many this. I don't want to walk into that. a place and be embarrassed. Totally get it. Yeah. And then later on in my life, what if stories come up and then I'm going to be embarrassed and that. Yep. These are all valid concerns that a territorial man will have. Totally innocent mm. that we have. Okay. You can go back and forth with that in your mind saying, I'm not getting married until I know 100% of the stuff. You ain't never going to get married. Mm. You're just never going to get married. So what's the moral of the story there? Okay, I'm the guy that has to do everything. Well, now I got a problem because it's not going to happen to yeah. me. I'm the mathematician. I'm the freaking math guy. I'm the angle guy. I'm the counting every light in a place. I'm the guy that's counting how many Celsius. How many? I'm the guy that's counting how many lines goes all the way down. Having a conversation with you, I'm counting those little buttons in here in that corner to see how many the buttons. Is it nine or is it twelve? I'm just kind of going. I'm that guy, right? So everything with my brain. The reason why I love math is because I can use Pythagorean theorem to get an answer to a formula that's the definite answer, not the maybe answer, not the 99% answer. So I have a problem with faith for a guy like me mm. because I'm not gonna know a hundred percent. So in this clip right here, Patrick gives us an interesting perspective on faith in his analogy here. In summary, if you know all the details about how and when something will happen, then you don't need God. That also means you will have a difficult time having faith in God. This is dangerous because it usually leads to a God complex, as Patrick rightly said. A God complex refers to an inflated sense of self-importance, superiority, or a belief in one's invincibility and infallibility. A God complex is dangerous because it makes one believe they possess God-like qualities or they are God themselves, leading to the grievous sin of pride or ascribing God's glory to oneself. The Bible warns us about this sin in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18, and Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. Feel free to check out those scriptures to see what I'm talking about. But who doesn't like a good story? So a familiar story in the Bible about someone who displayed a God complex and faced the consequences was King Nebuchadnezzar, the second and greatest king of the Chaldean dynasty of Babylonia. In Daniel chapter 4 verse 28 through 35, Nebuchadnezzar exhibited a delusional belief that he built his kingdom by his mighty power. Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? And that's in Daniel chapter 4 verse 30. This shows Nebuchadnezzar does not have faith in God and his word 
Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 says, He, God, changes the times and the season. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Nebuchadnezzar displayed arrogance and pride and paid for it by becoming like a wild animal for seven years until he acknowledged that God rules. And that's in Daniel chapter 4 verse 31 through 35. So what does this teach us? The opposite of faith is not fear in all cases, but also pride. To not have faith in God's existence or ability is to believe in something else, which is ascribing God's glory to either man or his invention. Another lesson about faith here is that only God knows the beginning and the ending. If you know all, there is no point in having faith. So do not be obsessed with getting all the details. You just possibly can't get everything. Excellence is great, but where the perfection can be attainable is debatable because there's always room for improvement and only God is perfect. Therefore, when you find yourself struggling with perfectionism or a God complex, know that you have a faith problem. Tell yourself, I don't know the details, but I know God is in control. That is pretty powerful in my opinion. Let's play the next clip. You didn't, weren't taught faith when you were younger. Uh, no, I was taught faith when I was younger, but I was a guy that got kicked out of Bible study in a Syrian uh, church in Iran and Tehran where they kicked me out. They're like, you know, you're asking too many questions. This is not what we're going to have. You got to get out of the class. And they kicked me out. I said, I don't, I'm not a Christian, guys. Told my mom and dad they were disappointed. I said, listen, I'm not going to go believe in this God that if he loves us so much, why are we getting bombed so many times? Why we get bombed 160 sometimes in a single day? Yeah, I'm not good with this. I don't believe God exists. All these people are dying for what? Over what? What are we dying over? So I was that guy that yeah, fought back. So, And he says... Dad, you know, oh, oh, what would happen if the war doesn't happen in Iran and Iran was at peace? I said, brother, I got to tell you this, Dilly boy, in a weirdest way, I'm glad it happened. Why, daddy? Because I can't imagine life never meeting you. You've changed my life, Dilly. I said, I can't imagine life not meeting you. I know we talked about in a couple other reactionary videos like George Carlin religion is BS. So the idea that there's a guy up there who claims to love you unconditionally yet allows evil to thrive in the world has always been a topic of debate about God. It is also one of the major arguments atheists have against God's existence and nature and one of the reasons many believers lose faith in God. If he claims to love the world, then why allow evil and death without doing anything? It's definitely a question worth asking. God loves us, but he also has given us free will. We have the choice to accept God's love or reject it. We also have the moral free will to choose to do good or evil. Unfortunately, more people reject good but embrace evil. That is why we have so many wars and deaths in the world today. However, you have an individual decision to make. Even if it seems evil is winning, you can choose love and faith in God. Remember, even in the midst of all the evil in this world, those who have faith in God experience victory and divine blessings. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Patrick bet David might have never met his wife and had his four kids if the war in Iran had not forced him to flee to America. Even if people's wrong choices reign evil on the world, your faith in God will always make a way for you. It kind of goes back to in the book of Genesis in chapter 50 verse 20, when Joseph told his brother what you intended to harm me when his brother sold him into slavery. So what you intended to be harm to me, God intended to be good to accomplish what is now being done and save the lives of many. So even though when Joseph's brother sold him into slavery and Joseph went through all that ordeal to become the second in command to Pharaoh, well, there was a famine in the land. And guess what? Joseph was given grace by God and the knowledge and wisdom by God to have that foresight and know how to handle the upcoming famine to help all the people around. Kind of crazy how that works. Kind of going off script here, but that's what came to mind to me just right now. Let's play the next clip. Comes down to marriage, everything's about odds. You don't know what's gonna happen. You could change, she could change. As long as you have a, you know, your faith in God and you do your part, your best, and she does her part, you guys go one year at a time, you're increasing the odds. But it's still not going to be 100%. Yeah, of course. Kids, same way. You're going to have kids, the fear of kids. You know, you got uh, miscarriage. You got this. You got that. You got this. There is risk. What if you only have daughters? Four kids, it's all daughters. What are you going to say? Oh, I want a son. What if you only have boys? You never have a daughter. It's God's plan for you. you can There's certain things in life. It's out of your hands. It's out of your hands. So faith, marriage, kids, these areas, I don't want to control. I, as a control guy, I don't want to control those specific areas. So this is a beautiful illustration of faith. 
Faith in God is like taking risk. However, whatever the outcome is, God is still in control. God is taking you to a destination. Your journey might be rough like that of the Israelites who had to navigate the wilderness, endure heat and pain, and fight wars for several years before reaching their destination. Or it might be like that of King Solomon who became king without hassle, fought no war, and enjoyed abundance all through his reign in Israel. Many things are outside your control. Heck, sometimes it's even hard to control yourself. But God has the whole world in his hands. He controls times and seasons. He can see the ending for the beginning. Therefore, it would be wise not to rely on your limited knowledge, but to trust in the omnipotent God. I know the risk is up to you. I know it's kind of cheesy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, let's go back to playing another clip. It is a greater risk to be an atheist than to believe in God. Why? I'm talking to Joe uh, on the podcast a couple weeks ago, and this conversation came up, right, about faith and all this stuff. And, and Joe has his own philosophies, and, you know, when he has all these different people, there's a reason why he's loved, because he'll talk to everybody about it. I said, look, right now with what's going on, you know who the establishment people of power hate historically? Guess who they've hated? People who are hopeful, people who are faithful, people who have the faith to believe the future looks bright. You can't control those types of people. It's a very weird dynamic. Their eyes are different. There's fire in those eyes. You know what the eyes look like when somebody is hopeless? Or doesn't have, you know, it's like so faithless. You know what their eyes look like? Defeated. Yeah, bitter. Broken. You can control them. Yeah. You can push them around. You can bully them. Good luck bullying. Somebody who has faith. Somebody who has faith or is hopeful. One of the weapons the enemy uses to attack God's people is fear. His end game is not to cause people to be afraid, but to lose faith in God. In the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, and the furnace in Daniel chapter 3 verses 8 through 25, King Nebuchadnezzar passed a decree that anyone who refused to bow down to his gold image should be thrown into the fierce furnace. The aim of this decree was not just to kill those who believed in God, but to instill great fear in them so they would be shaken and lose faith in God. The same thing happened to Daniel when a decree was passed that whoever prayed to God will be thrown into the lion's den, and that's in Daniel chapter 6. Fear is a tool to manipulate people and make them forget who they are in Christ and who they belong to. It is a battle against the mind. That is why God has given us his Holy Spirit who gives us power and a sound mind. And that's in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. The minds of those who have faith in God are fortified against fear and anxiety because the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard it. And that's in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 through 7. I'm an author of four books and I hope you got the message behind this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Go ahead and check out links in the description. If you want to subscribe to my email list, as well as check out my books, or if you want to buy your boy a cup of coffee, because this video is sponsored by coffee. Anyways, with that being said, thank you again for watching. Until the next upload.